All right, let's get started. Any questions? Yes. 1652? Hopefully. If I can't explain it, we're in trouble. 5 is equal to negative sine of 5. And sine of 180 minus 5 is equal to sine 5. Positive sine 5? Yeah, positive sine 5. thinking it would be uh, my next step after finding a relationship right from here you can get what b dot in terms of a dot and then and I would have used the law of sine saying that the sine of theta over b is equal to the sine of 180 minus phi over L. 
which is another. <laughs> so my way was much harder than your way. Oh, I like your way. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's just dealing with a because that's the vector you have, and theta. The reason you get theta is the total angle of the triangle is 180, and that's what that looks out. So well. Thank you for the helpful hint. So I was giving you wrong hints. This is what this is what came to my mind first. This is much better. Other questions on the homework? Other better answers? Uh, question on the fly? Uh, so we're looking at homework. Uh, I did post new homework uh, yesterday. So you're stuck in one. How much to get bored? <laughs> so uh, today we're talking about relative acceleration. We've talked about velocity, and we have two different two methods so far. Actually, three methods so far to calculate relative velocities or velocities of points on linkages. Uh, today we're going to look at acceleration. Acceleration is harder than velocity. There's no instant center for acceleration. So life is a little more challenging. Let's, yeah. Sorry, real quick. When you do problems like with the, uh, like the piston problems, uh -huh. um, you can do it either, but you cannot, ever, sorry, what Go I was ahead. going to say is that the instant center, you cannot be applied for accelerations in Correct. Any circumstances. Correct. Many times it's an easier way to get velocities or omegas, but you can't use it for acceleration unless it's actually fixed. Because like the wheel, the wheel point, contact point of the wheel on the ground right. has zero velocity, but its acceleration is not zero. Right. So there is no point really that you can find with zero acceleration. Yeah. At least no easy way to find that. Yeah. We try to use this to set up for acceleration. Yeah, you're not the first people to try that. <laughs> yeah, the company has two components. So let's try a quiz. Two bodies in contact without slipping. The points in contact move along different paths. What's true? Or it be me, surprise. This is like rolling on the ground without slipping. Fixed and you rotate around the other one. 
Now, what are our accelerations going to be when we're rotating about our second point? Going back to polar coordinates, we're going to have a tangential acceleration, which is our alpha, and a normal acceleration, which is r omega squared. r omega squared always points in the opposite direction of r. That's pointing towards the center of the circle. r alpha is going to be perpendicular. It's going to be pointing in the same direction as the velocity, hence we call it the tangential acceleration. So how could we use this? Here we have a casement window, it looks like. And so as it's going, uh, you're going to have a certain uh, acceleration or motion here, and that how is this motion here going to cause your window to rotate in terms of acceleration? And every single link is going to have a normal acceleration. The normal acceleration always points backwards along the link, and a tangential acceleration, which is always pointing perpendicular to the link. And so every link is going to have its own omega, which is angular velocity, and alpha, which is this angular acceleration. And you're going to have some relations between them uh, by using the relative velocity, relative acceleration equations. Similarly, here you have a piston. Uh, so basically, we want to figure out, based on the acceleration of the piston, what's going to be the angular acceleration here or the other way around. If this is moving at a constant omega, what's the acceleration going to be on the piston? And so we can relate everything together. And it turns out. What is your normal acceleration? R omega squared, and since it's omega squared at high tangent speeds, that normal acceleration of just your parts is gonna produce a lot more force on your system than the actual gas explosion torque because of the fuel. And so the stresses in your part, the loading in your part is gonna be a lot higher than what would be demanded just by exploding the fuel. It's actually just holding itself together is most of the work. So velocity, we have the velocity of B is equal to the velocity of A plus the velocity of B with respect to A. And the velocity of B with respect to A was equal to what? R omega. R omega. And so and it's, it's always going to be perpendicular to R. So now we're taking the derivative of this. And so these are the absolute accelerations of point B and point A. And they're measured with a fixed coordinates and this is a relative acceleration, and it is going to have both tangential and normal components. That is, as we're rotating, this is B with respect to A, so we're holding A fixed. As we're rotating around, we're going to have two components, a normal and a tangential component. And so we basically AB is equal to AA plus AB with respect to A tangential plus AB with respect to A normal. In velocities, we only had BB with respect to A tangential, the normal was zero. And so basically we're going to have one extra term in our vector equation. So basically as we're rotating, uh, we're going to have a combination of a translation where everybody's moving together, and we're going to have a rotation, and we draw our omega and our alpha about A, because this is the acceleration of B with respect to A. In reality, if you, whatever you rotate, every single point is going to have the same omega and alpha. Right, with a rigid body, I can't rotate the bottom part. I mean, this is right. If we want to rotate different amounts at different place, we're no longer a rigid body. For a rigid body, everybody moves along the same theta, and so everybody's going to have the same omega, and everybody's going to have the same alpha. It's in our mind we're picturing with this term here that we are rotating about a, so we must well draw our omega and our alpha about a, just to help us visualize what's happening. It's really just rotating in space. And so AB with respect to A is a tangential, which has alpha cross R, which has magnitude of what? When we do the cross product, the magnitude is just alpha times R, the perpendicular distance. And the direction is perpendicular. Right? The cross product makes it perma perpendicular. So it has magnitude of alpha R, and it's perpendicular to the radius. And then the, the normal component is omega cross omega cross r. You need the parentheses in there for the math to work in the terms of vectors. But in terms of magnitude, it's just going to be omega squared r. And it's, so it's minus omega squared r. So it's going to be pointing in the opposite direction of r. r was from a to b. So the acceleration is from b back to a. You're always accelerating towards the center of the circle that you're rotating about. 
And so basically what we get is a b is equal to a, a plus uh, alpha cross r plus minus omega squared r. And the last term is not a cross product. It's just omega squared uh, as well. So we're, but since we're only dealing with planar motion, uh, we basically can do the products in our head. So sometimes we know what's happening here. So what do we know about C? What do we know? It's, it's moving back and forth in a straight line, so therefore the acceleration is going to be in this direction. Uh, what about point B? Well, point B is on link AB. And we know the acceleration at A is zero, because it's a pin linkage to the ground, and so this is actually in the center as much as you can get for it's the constant center. <laughs> and so the acceleration of point B is equal to what? Well, it has two components, r omega squared back this way, and r alpha perpendicular. So those are those two components right here. Your r omega squared back this way, and your r alpha that way. That gives us a total acceleration with respect to ground of the acceleration of B. And the acceleration of C we know is going to be this way. And then here we have another link, and so we can write the acceleration of C with respect to B. So the acceleration of C is equal to the acceleration of B plus the acceleration of C with respect to B. We don't always have to use A and B in our equation. Uh, and so by the two things, we basically, uh, we already talked about point C is horizontal. And so we can basically set up a coordinate system, uh, set up our equations and go from there. So figure out what your coordinate system is. You actually might want to do this after you uh, basically figure out what directions your accelerations are so you can align your coordinates with the directions of motion. But you know that Z is going to be out of the board, so you assume the direction of omega and alpha. And then your kinematic diagram, what is it going to look like? What are your velocities accelerations? Integrate where your omega, alpha, r's are going to be on your thing. Uh, and then basically you have normal attention acceleration for any link that's rotating or any relative acceleration. So you don't do the cross product usually so we do that already in the scalar format. What happens if you get a negative number? It's the opposite direction you assume it was going. Velocities, it's easier to picture which way things are going to go. Accelerations are a little bit harder because we have that omega squared term in there. So don't feel bad if you get it wrong. So here we have a very simple linkage in the fact that we only have one link, but we need some more information about our problem. We know that acceleration of A and the velocity of A is uh, given to us 5 meters per second squared and 5 meters per second at this very instant. And this is in a 3, 4, 5 triangle, which helps us out in terms of sines and cosines. What we want to figure out is the angular acceleration of the rod and the acceleration of point B at this instant. So, where do we go from there? Well, we'll, we'll draw our picture. And we're basically know this is point A and B. We know that the velocity of A is in this direction, and it's given to us equal five meters per second. That's six meters per second. And we can actually draw another picture, so we're, or we can use different colors. Let's just do a different picture because you probably want to have different colors. We know the acceleration of A is, that's the five meters per second squared. So this is point A this is point B. So those are the things that were given. What other accelerations do we know? What about the acceleration of point B? We solve for it. We can solve for it. We know its direction, right? We know the velocity of B is in this direction, and the acceleration of B is going to be in that direction. It's an unknown, but we do know its direction. And since these are vector equations, knowing the direction is half the information we need. What other information do we have? Well, our equation, what was our equation? We have acceleration of B equals the acceleration of A plus the acceleration of B with respect to A normal plus the acceleration of B with respect to A 
tangential. So, acceleration of B with respect to A normal, what is that going to be? Where would we draw that? It would be at B towards A, because it's B with respect to A. So this is A, B with respect to A normal. And we know that is going to be, we have a length of L and times omega squared. The normal acceleration always goes from B back to A, and it's the length times omega squared. So what we're assuming that this is going to be omega, and this is going to be alpha, using the right-hand rule. Right? Right-hand rule says counterclockwise is positive. We may be wrong in our assumption, but we didn't spend too much time thinking about it, so we didn't waste time that way. Okay, so that this is our normal. What direction is our tangential? Perpendicular. It's perpendicular to the rod. Is it going to be going up and to the right or down and to the left? Up and to the right. Up and to the right, because it's pointing in the same direction. As long as we do alpha around our right point and across the link, it's going to be going up and to the right. And since it's getting a little crowded in there, this would be A, B with respect to A tangential, and that's equal to L times alpha. And the problem is, is now in our equation, we don't know AB, we don't know omega, and we don't know alpha. So when we're looking at acceleration, the first thing you need to do is solve for omega. So now we have three unknowns, so the first thing you really need to do to, to solve an acceleration problem, the first thing you need to do is solve the velocity problem. You can't get around it. But velocity at least isn't as complicated. How would we solve this velocity problem? Well, the, what are we looking for? It's omega. The only thing we're concerned about is omega and not the, actually the velocity of b. And so the easiest way to find omega is to use our friend the instant center. Hopefully, it will become our friend, hopefully. If not, you can do b, b is equal to ba plus bb with respect to a. So let's just use our instant center. What do we know about the instant center? Perpendicular. It's perpendicular to the velocities. So velocity a is down, and so the instant center has to be somewhere over here. And the velocity of b is horizontal, so the velocity instant center has to be somewhere here. And this is our happy point, our instant center. We're given that this is five meters, and this is four meters, so this has to be three meters. So from our instant center, we get that BA, which is six meters per second, is equal to, now we're writing omega about the instant center. It's the same omega as this, it's just because it, we're just writing it about the instant center to help our mind. And since they're both drawn, counterclockwise, it'll both have the same omega. It's just here we're doing this, and so six meters per second downward is equal to what? Three meters times omega, and what direction is that going to be? Not clockwise. The velocity of this point when we're rotating counterclockwise is going to be going down as well. So from this, we can get that omega is equal to 6 meters per second divided by 3 meters, which is equal to 2 radians per second. And that's counterclockwise. And that's also this is counterclockwise. So our assumed direction is right. Yeah. So our assumed direction is right, coincidentally. You have a 50% chance of getting it right if you don't think about it. You have a 60% chance of getting it right if you think yeah. about it. Or maybe 75, depending on who you are. <laughs> All right. Now, we can go to our equation there. What are we looking for? We're trying to find what alpha is and what AB is. Now we know omega by doing the velocity. We're trying to find AB and alpha, which is located in the tangential acceleration. So, now we can fill these things out. AB, what do we know about AB? AB is equal to AB. This is one of the things we're trying to find, but we know that that's to the right is equal to AA. What's AA? Well, that's given to us. 
five meters per second, and that's going to be going downwards. Seconds squared, thank you. Those pesky units. AB with respect to A normal. That's this one here, and so this is going to be L, which is five meters times omega, which is now two radians per second squared, and we know that. And that's going to be what direction? It's going to be up and to the left, and it's going to be by a three, four, five triangle like that. So the three is the horizontal and the four is the vertical because it's along the axis here. Plus AB with respect to A tangential. Well, that's always equal to L alpha. And so L is five meters and alpha is just alpha. That's one of our unknowns. And that's going to be going in one direction. That's going to be up and to the right. And it's going to be perpendicular. And whenever you're perpendicular, you, your sine and your cosine flip each other. So it's 3 and 4 rather than 4 and 3. So now we have a very beautiful vector equation with magnitudes and directions. How do we solve it? AutoCAD. Right? We can do it in AutoCAD, right? So what is it going to look like? It's going to be 5 meters per second down this way. And it's going to be up how far? 5 times 4 is 20. Draw a line up here, which is 20 plus what? Plus some line, oops, I all right, this is the advantage of AutoCAD, is it scales, <laughs> all right, five meters per second plus 20 meters per second squared. Uh, and this is it in three, four, five, plus something in this direction. All right, so we know the direction and we can basically draw it however long it needs to be. That's equal to what? AB, which is horizontal, and that's the advantage of AutoCAD. So basically, we, this is our solution, graphically. Right, this is how we used to do it, right? Pencil and paper, and you draw it at the angles, and then you take your ruler and measure it, and you're pretty close. So we're engineers, so it doesn't really matter. So if this is the solution, then what? What is this line here? This is the 5 alpha, so this vector here is 5 alpha, and since this is in the opposite direction as this, it means what? We assume the wrong direction, alpha is going to be negative. And this vector here is AB, and AB is also going to be negative. That's assuming our CAD skills are okay. Let's not do it using CAD skills, let's try to use our math skills. That was yours, okay. Wait a minute, what's going on? Okay, so how do we solve this fine vector equation? Components. So since one of our vectors is horizontal, we can just use x and y for our components. And so in the x direction, positive to the right, we get a b equals zero plus three fifth minus three fifths of twenty meters per second squared plus, and this is to the right, so it will be plus four-fifths of five meters times 
alpha. That's one of your equations, and we have unknowns of a, b, and alpha. And so the next step would be in the y direction to get our second equation with our second unknown. And what did we get here? Zero, which makes us happy. Why does it make us happy? We lose one of our unknowns, and so now we don't have to solve simultaneous equations. So that's going to be confusing. That's just zero. Uh, is equal to minus 5, assuming positive is up. So it's minus 5 meters per second squared. Plus, vertically, now we have 4 fifths, and it's upwards, times 20 meters per second squared. Plus, this is also upwards, 3 fifths of 5 meter times alpha. So those are our two equations, two unknowns. But by choosing our coordinates such that the, one of the coordinates aligns with one of your unknowns, then one of your, cor one of your systems will end up being one equation and one unknown. From here, we can get that our alpha equals what? Uh, 5 minus 16 over 3. Uh, this would be ratings per second, right? This is going to be minus 5 to the other side is 5 minus uh, 20 divided by 5 is 4 to 4 to 16. And so this is, that's something, yeah, that's right. Minus 3.67 radians per second. And then now we can plug into this radians per second squared. So now we can, from here we can get that AB is equal to minus 27.6 meters per second squared. If we multiply that out, plugging in minus 3 for here. So this is negative, this is negative, we end up with something very negative. Does that look right? Does that sort of look like our beautiful artistic rendition? Right, we have AB was negative and a lot longer than 5. So 27 is a lot longer than 5. And then AA, well this is also a lot longer than 5. But if we multiply this by 5 times this, right, this is 5 alpha, so this long length divided by 5 gives us, it's about 3 times longer than 5, 3 and a half times longer. So, if you drew an auto you'd actually get the right answer. But drawing it on the board, that's graphically what we're doing. So basically what we're looking at is, how do we solve it? We look at the vertical distances and we also look at the horizontal distances basically what we're doing here, but I find just trying to draw the triangle just gets people confused. All right, contact without slipping. We had a, a question about this. When you have two gears going together, then we, were, we know that the center of each gear has zero acceleration. The point on the edge has a tangential acceleration, which is equal to what? Tangential is? R alpha. So the tangential accelerations are R alpha. They'll have different R's because we have different radius of gears. So that's how we can relate the alpha or angular acceleration of the gears. We'll also have a normal acceleration. What's a normal acceleration? R omega squared, and that's the acceleration which causes these points as we're rotating to get further apart. So down here, our gear teeth are further apart. Here they're in contact, down here they're further apart because they started acceleration apart right there. So that's what this acceleration means. It's your teeth are going to come out of mesh as time progresses. Uh, and so basically your tangential acceleration, your R alpha equals R alpha, and the normal accelerations are not going to be the same. And there was that. So rolling motion. Rolling, 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 rolling. Okay, what do we know about the acceleration of A? What? Acceleration of A. 
Yeah. It's not zero. It's so it's not, the tangential acceleration of A is zero. It could have a normal acceleration. What do we know about the acceleration of G? No, it's not. It's not zero, otherwise we don't move. It's translating. It's translating, so we know that the acceleration of G has to be horizontal. The horizontal acceleration or the tangential acceleration of the ground has to be zero. And those two constraints we can use to figure out what the acceleration of is going on. Uh, and so there is not a nice point of zero acceleration, so we can't use the instant center approach. But what we end up with, uh, the velocity of g is equal to r omega, which is just what we had before. Uh, and the acceleration, well, what's the acceleration of g going to be? Now we can take the derivative of r omega and get r alpha. And so the acceleration of the center of gravity turns out to be, uh, well, this is your equation. Acceleration of g is equal to acceleration of a plus acceleration of g with respect to a. Looking at horizontally, the horizontal acceleration here is zero because it's attached to the ground. And so the acceleration of g is just going to be r alpha. And the acceleration of this point, well, vertically, the acceleration of z is zero. And so the acceleration of this point is r omega squared. So acceleration of g is r alpha. Acceleration of this, the point of contact is r omega squared. r alpha in that direction, r omega squared up. So you don't have to derive this every single time. Every time you have a wheel rotating, acceleration of g is r alpha. Acceleration up is r omega squared. So what do we have in this case? The gear rolls on a fixed rack. We want to find the acceleration of point A at this instant. How do we do that? So we are given alpha equals six radians per second and omega equals 12 radians per second. What's the acceleration of point A going to be? So the acceleration of A equals what? Well, it's equal to the acceleration of O plus the acceleration of A with respect to O. Here is O and here is the ground. What do we know about the acceleration of O? It's translating and it has an acceleration of R alpha. We just proved it by waving our hands really quickly. Uh, <laughs> So that's that. What's the acceleration of A with respect to O? Well, the acceleration of A with respect to O now has two components. We have a normal component plus the acceleration of A with respect to O, tangential. Acceleration of O, we said, was R alpha. What about the acceleration of A with respect to O, normal? Normal acceleration is always R omega squared pointing back towards the center. And so we're going to have an r omega squared acceleration back towards the center. What else are we going to have? So this is normal is r omega squared downwards. What about our tangential? Uh, two r omega? No, it's the distance between o and a, which is r, and then it's times alpha. What direction is this going to be? To the right? I disagree. Oh, we hold old, we hold old, there we go. O is fixed. We're rotating like this, so it is to the right. Yes. So it, <laughs> I disagree because my mind is wrong. So I'm glad you guys figured this out. So this is going to be to the right. And so what do we get? This is really easy. Everything, so it's basically in the x direction. 
we have 2r alpha i, and in the y direction, we have minus r omega squared j. And we'll leave it at that. And I'm assuming you can put the numbers in yep. at this point. So conceptually, ball is rolling without slipping. What are the normal and tangential acceleration, normal and tangential components of the relative acceleration point A with respect to G? So A with respect to G, what's the normal and tangential components? The relative acceleration using alpha and omega in the direction shown. So it's either A or B, because the R omega squared is vertical. So if, if we're rotating alpha in this direction, what direction is A going to move? A will move to the left. As we're rotating about G, then A is going to be going to the left, which is negative, and so B is the right answer. Assuming we're rotating about G, we're actually rotating about A. What are the tangential and normal components of the relative acceleration of point B with respect to G? back to G, and so that's going to be a negative, and so it's negative <coughs> square squared I, and that's the only one with that in it is A. Mechanism from the top. Uh, is it open right now? Uh, so the uh, 
Good question. I think. Wait. Because it's like the wall's it's going. Fixed on the, on the it's corner. fixed on the wall. It's closed right now, I think. Where's the but door? But it's opening this way. That's not closed. It's, 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 it's opening? It's open? It will. closes towards A. Like, it closes towards like, All right. No, so it's still clockwise. Or kind of, that's weird. Starting open. Starting yeah. next question. The next question. Well, we can at least figure out the direction. We're spending more time trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah. Hopefully the test scores are better. That's the advantage of looking and having some homework questions yes. uh, on the test and that you're not figuring out so much what's going on because you've seen the problem before. Theoretically. <laughs> Wait, what the heck is he doing? He changed the letter. <laughs> All right. This is A, A is good. Okay, so we have a fine door company. Uh, and we know basically we're given that alpha, which is alpha is three radians per second. And what we want to figure out, alpha is three radians per second. What we want to figure out is alpha <coughs> BC and alpha CD. So we know alpha, which is alpha AB, the door, is 3 radians per second. So where do we go from here? R1 is 2.5 inch. R2 is Six inch uh, theta is sixty degrees. R three is four inch, and this distance here is twelve. Inch. Yes. Uh, would not that be radio per second squared? Yes. Uh, it always is, but my okay. brain the, the square just gets lost. Okay. All right. So we look at this and we freak out. Yes. yes. And then we take a few deep breaths and we say, oh, I know the equation. What is our equation? It's <laughs> point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All right. So what, what can move complex? The, the door, what do we know about the door? It just rotates. What about this link right here? It just rotates. And so our equation we're going to get is that acceleration of C is equal to the acceleration of B plus the acceleration of C with respect to A normal plus the acceleration of C with respect to B tangential. So normal and tangential, a vector equation, don't freak out. It's a relative acceleration. So you look at what rotates and translates and go from there. And then we say, well, we're starting at rest. What does that do for us? Zero. Right? If, if this isn't moving, so we have omega AB equals zero, therefore omega BC equals zero, and omega CD also equals zero. Which is big happy. Why does that make us happy? Because all of our r omega squared terms go to zero. So our normal is gone. So our normal is all gone. Yes. As soon as it starts to move, if we had to solve it later on, then we would have omega squared, and it would be a really hard problem. But now, what do we know about the acceleration of c? Yeah. <laughs> Very good. It's not, so what did you say? I'm sorry. Well, the acceleration of C is also on this link, and so it's and the acceleration of D is zero. So what's the acceleration of C? So assuming we have what omega uh, C D and alpha C D about D, acceleration of C is going to have two components, right? From the omega 
So we're going to have one back here, which is 12 inches times omega squared, which is 0. And then we're also going to have another one, which is perpendicular. perpendicular. And that's going to equal 12 inches times alpha CD. And so acceleration of C is going to be up and to the right uh, where this direction is 60. And it's going to be 12 alpha CD equals acceleration of B. What do we know about the acceleration of B? It's going down. Well, acceleration of B, here we have a, a oh, constant B. distance. And so the acceleration of B is going to be perpendicular. It's going to be down like this. And so this is going to be alpha. That way. Yeah, which is 3. So this is a, this is a radius. Oh. Between A and B. So it's alpha times the square root of 6 squared plus 2.5 squared. The, the distance between here and here is 6 squared plus 2.5 squared is the square root. So this is 6 squared plus 2.5 squared the square root. And then the, the normal we had, and this is times alpha, which is given. That's 3 radians per second. And then the normal we have is the direction, right? uh, the direction is going to be down and to the right at 2.5 and then out, this is zero, and this is what? Alpha C with respect to B, tangential, that's going to be right, So here we have alpha B C, and so this is A C with respect to B, Tangential. And so that's going to be equal to 4 inches times alpha BC, and that's going to be directed to the right. We're going to do components. Oh, we'll finish this up next time. Uh, the next question is. Jim, I love you. Yeah. Where are you going away? Right there. Almost 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 there.